This is Bath, one of the most beautiful, historical and literary cities in all of England and honestly probably my favourite town in England. It's a gorgeous place that I like to come to every autumn and winter if possible because that's when it gives off the best vibes. What we're going to do today is take a little tour of the best independent bookshops in Bath because Bath is home to one of my favourite independent bookshops ever and also visit the House of Frankenstein and the Jane Austen Museum. The House of Frankenstein is probably my favourite building in Britain and you're going to see why in a second. Let's go have a look around. Behind me is Mary Shelley's House of Frankenstein. I am recording this after I've already been in there. That's why I am hot and sweaty because I went down into the basement which is a whole horror thing and is genuinely terrifying. But ignore all of that. Let's go inside. Well, you're going to go inside. I've already been inside. Anyway, this is the best place in the world. Let's go have a look. Once again, you go have a look. I'm done. I'm done. This is Mary Shelley's House of Frankenstein in Bath. It is right next to the Jane Austen Centre, but Frankenstein's my favourite novel, so this is my favourite place. Anyway, you go around this place, and it is full of posters for old Frankenstein films. Upstairs is a massive model of Frankenstein's monster. You can also watch the original Frankenstein movie, the old 1930s black and white thing upstairs as well. There's a gift shop downstairs. I'm going to show you all of this. This is my second time here, and I'm already freaking out because I'm back and I love it. Mary Shelley's House of Frankenstein is my dream place. Let's have a look around. You start off with book stuff. You've got the history of Mary Shelley as a person, the history of her writing, how she was inspired, what she did. So it's very much dedicated to the novel at first. As you go up, you move into things like comic book and movie and cartoon adaptations, etc. But we begin celebrating the life, the works, the genius of Mary Shelley, the greatest woman to ever live. I don't know how well you can see this because of the lighting, it's very atmospheric, but this place not only is very educational and tells you all about the life of Mary Shelley, Mary Wollstonecraft, William Godwin, the whole family, the whole legacy, but it's also just very, very creepy and gothic and sci-fi in terms of its aesthetic. So you've got brain in a jar, there is here behind me a skeleton in a cage, they lean into the ridiculous, campy, gothic sci-fi aesthetics beautifully, while also being wonderfully educational. You've got quotes, you've got dates, you've got bios, you've got paintings, but then it's all kind of freaky and weird, the fact that the portrait of Mary Wollstonecraft, her head's in a jar Futurama style, because why not? Why not educate while also entertaining and kind of creeping people out in a campy way? I love and respect everything this building does. I love it so much. They have an enormous plaster cast head of Mary Shelley. Also interesting, and I think I'm right in saying this, this whole place has a very kind of sickly sweet, floral, potpourri, sugary smell, the whole place. And I'm pretty sure it's because that smell was used to disguise the smell of the dead. And therefore, the smell evokes death. I think I'm right. This room is dedicated to 1816, the year that created Frankenstein. This is when she went to the villa in Switzerland with uh, Percy Shelley and Lord Byron and they dared each other to write ghost stories. So you've got the entire story of how all this happened and it's a lovely atmosphere, lots and lots to learn. But as I said, every corridor and the stairs and everything are lined with posters dedicated to the films. So you've got the aesthetic of Frankenstein and the wonderful campiness of it while also being educated. I just love the blend of those two things here so much. And you have artwork like this. This is, this is the birth of a monster. I'm pretty sure this place actually paid a lot of artists to create original pieces and one particular original piece that you'll see upstairs.
This is the Jane Austen Centre behind me in Bath, and this is Mr. Bennett from Pride and Prejudice. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Would you care to explain a little bit about what the Jane Austen Centre actually is? Yes, we have an exhibition here. Okay. It is an exhibition, not a museum. Several reasons, mm -hmm. basically, is um, because when Jane Austen lived here, mm -hmm. she wasn't that well known. Not very many people could read or write, you see. And okay. the second point is, they only rented while they were here in Bath. They didn't actually own any properties outright. And is that why it has to be called an exhibition? Yes, it is. Oh, wow. Have fun in your next venue. Oh, we absolutely will. Thank yes. you. This is Mr. B's Emporium of Reading Delights, my favourite independent bookshop in probably Britain, honestly. I love this place. It's really charming, it's really welcoming, and it does this really cool thing which is called, oh, I can't remember, a reading spa or something, where they sit you down with a bookseller and talk about what you like, and then give you a big stack of books that they think will interest you at the end of it. It's a really cool thing to do, and you can give it to someone for their birthday. Let's have a look around. Behind me is Persephone Books. Persephone Books used to be in central London and they moved to Bath like a year or two ago. And they are very interesting because they publish and also sell books by women from the 19th and 20th centuries who kind of got ignored or their books went out of print. And so they basically republish them in their own style with this gorgeous gray cover with this beautiful insert. They're lovely, they're gorgeous. If you've never bought a Persephone book, you can sometimes just find them in charity shops. Otherwise, get them from Persephone. Come to the shop, go to their website, they get gift bound, they're beautiful. Let's go look inside. This is Topping & Co. As far as I know, there are three of these dotted around Britain. I think there's this one in Bath, there's one in Ely, and I think there's one in St Andrews in Scotland. Oh my god, there are children talking. No offence to children. Since I was last here, Topping has moved its location, and I wondered why, until I saw that they've moved into a giant Roman building with columns. So, uh, let's grab a look.
Right now I'm standing in a gorgeous square with a massive tree over it that I invite you to visit. There's lots of tea shops and souvenir shops and things around. I can't tell you where it is. It's in the middle-ish. But I'm going to stop the video here. You've seen the bookshops, you've seen all the gorgeous stuff, you can see why Bath is the best place and why the House of Frankenstein is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me except for the novel Frankenstein. Anyway, bye, give me money on Patreon and subscribe for books. Is that funny? <laughs> I love you all.